on the champagne and conversation. Wait, Sugar Chef, where are you? Hey, hey. What you doing? I'm, I'm clinking, clinking and baking. Cheers oh. to you. Cheers, <laughs> friends. How clink, are clink, you? Clink, clink. Look, yeah. I need this. I need this after the day I had today. What are you doing? What are you doing? What kind of day did you have? Tell me all about it. It was rough. Oh, but I'm the most important thing, I'm working on this strawberry and pink champagne, AKA rosé for this very special client. So I have to make buttercream for this very special client. Oh. Mm hmm So sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Look at you. You fancy. Oh, he is fancy. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Sugar Chef. As I we have known, fancy. <laughs> we are so excited to have Sugar Chef on. A uh, good friend of mine, good friend to the show. Just recently knocked it out on Food Network's Chop Sweets. Yay. Yay, mm -hmm. as, you are, as you are. Clink, clink, clink. Yes, clink. And I am so happy to have you here today. And I'm not sure what that special client is getting, but you just said something delicious, which is strawberry rosé batter for... Mm -hmm. For that what? special client. <laughs> <laughs> Shorty, it's my birthday. Go, Shorty. Mm -hmm. It's my birthday. Hey. It's your birthday. Go it's your birthday. It's your birthday. It's We're going to party like it's your birthday. That is it. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. So can we see anything? Mm. You got anything to show us? No. It's part <laughs> of the surprise. You okay. have to have a, in TV, you have to have an element of surprise. Oh, boo. Whatever. I wanted to see the finished product, but yeah. I guess we'll put up pictures and video later, guys, mm -hmm. of my birthday cake. Yeah. I'm so excited. Thank have you. Cake. Have well, we'll give you a little, we'll give you a little break your birthday. and let you talk about some of the great things that you are doing, because I know you've been working hard on this and you have some other amazing things that you wanted to share. So I want to make sure that all of the people that may be interested in Sugar Chef, IG, Sugar Chef, mm -hmm. your website. Yep, SugarChef.com, Sugar Chef everywhere. Uh, let me let me let me move you a little bit. Uh -oh. <laughs> I want to move, move you a little bit. Yeah, like you know, it. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little tech challenge. So we're gonna work it out. I think we both are. It's all right. So tell me, how long have you been, um, you know, with the passion of pastries? I love the cupcake behind you, as by the way. I know, right? Yeah, hey, let me great backdrop. Sure yeah, so make um, sure you can get it. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been, um, you know, in this pastry field doing these amazing desserts and cakes? Well, you know, I've been baking all of my life, pretty much. Um, I started out, I can remember, maybe when I was about seven, old enough to peel, slice, not quite dice, but I was helping my peel potatoes. Um, I can remember snipping string beans. I don't know if you remember that, snipping ends off. Um, <laughs> I was helping her peel potatoes for her sweet potato pie. She was, uh, she loved to make sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie, she was great at making rolls, but her faint corn pudding, that was another uh, favorite wow. of ours. Right. Rice pudding was her signature thing. And that but was your mother or your grandmother? My mother. Okay. My mother. I love my mother's rice pudding, but, 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 I didn't, I think when I was a kid, I didn't like raisins. So I would always, you know, take the raisins. <laughs> I would always take the raisins out. Yeah. So, uh, but it was just fond memories indeed. Fond memories indeed. So I've been baking maybe since I was about seven or eight. Oh, cool. um, baking since I was seven or eight. Um, you know, native Washingtonian, the youngest of seven. Uh, when I you know, just kind of navigating myself being the youngest, I had to figure out what I was going to do. I knew I was great with my hands. And so believe it or not, I thought that I could, um, you know, my mom was a nurse. 
my sister at the time was a GI doctor. So I had like that healthcare blood in me, so to speak. And so when I was young, I thought, oh, you know, maybe I want to be a dermatologist. I've always been interested in skin. Nice. So then my sister was like, well, Pod, you realize how many years they have to go to school, right? And I was like, mm, no. <laughs> but I knew that I was an ambitious kid. I knew I loved to have money in my pocket. So I was very, um, an industrious young kid. I knew I'd like to, um, I knew I was great with my hands. Sure. And I knew I was creatively driven. So I knew it was something along the lines of that. So um, believe it or not, one day we were downtown. My mom had to take care of some business. We were downtown. Um, I would, you know, while she was up in the office taking care of her nursing stuff, I wandered around, was walking through the, um, I think we were right off of K, Connecticut. I want to say we were off of K, maybe L Street. I think we were in L as a matter of fact. And I wandered into this restaurant. They had newspaper on the window, not newspaper, but they had the brown paper on the window and they had a now hiring sign. So I was like, you know, why not? So I wandered in, spoke with this guy named Dave uh, and it was, turns out I was a dishwasher after school. So I, um, turns out it was Bob Kincaid's first restaurant venture into um, DC and it was called 21 Federal at the time. Okay. And uh, so, you know, I'm working in there with these chefs and stuff and these cooks and amazing cooks and just high end food. And it's just like some of the stuff I didn't understand. I didn't know what it was. So, you know, while you're sliced, while you're washing dishes, you know, you're peeling, slicing and dicing. So I was doing, um, you know, I learned how to shuck oysters, unfortunately, not my favorite oh, my thing. Favorite. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is my favorite. We need that right now with that champagne. I had to do yeah. oysters pancetta. I can remember doing tons of those, uh, peeling carrots, peeling potatoes, just all kinds of things, onions, just whatever. So then um, I was always interested in pastry. So, you know, just from helping my mother at home. So I would bring in just little things that I made at home for the pastry chef to try. Okay. And for some reason, I just couldn't make a biscuit to save my life. So yeah, I would bring in these hockey pucks and then Susan at the time, it was made May Barnes, and then later on it became Susan McQuite Lindenberg, who I consider my pastry mentor because she taught me so much about making French bread. She was known for her breads and her ice cream and her plate of desserts at the restaurant. So um, she taught me how to make breads, taught me how to use a scale, taught me the secret of her pumpernickel bread, and I won't tell it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that was really my first introduction to you know the pastry world formally. Okay. Um, you know, I started, of course, I stopped doing that. She was like, you know what? Why don't you help me on weekends? So I started helping her on weekends. And then I eventually started doing garmage, like doing desserts and stuff like that. Um, the plated um, appetizers, salads. So I was like, I wasn't really into the salads, I, but I did it because I needed the money. Well, I wanted the money anyway, I should say. Yeah. Um, that was it. That's how I started. Uh, you know, I stayed there for a few years. And then I eventually moved on. I was like, okay, I think I want to go to culinary school. So I went to, well, actually, no, I think I wanted to, I said I wanted to bake full time. So after I left that job at 21 Federal, I went to work at a bakery in Suitland. It was, it was called Gold Leaf Bakery. And, and that's where you um, got your kickoff, huh? In terms of all know, the was, that you wanted to do. Yeah, that's why mm -hmm. I kind of started, yeah. But that was before yeah. the days of Fonda and like all of the cream. things that you could decorate the cakes with. That was just a basic cake at that point, right? This was some flowers. No, no, no. Um, you know, believe it or not, this, right, no, let me tell you. Susan introduced me to um, Joy of Cooking. So I was a very, like, a, um, a visual learner. Like, I love to look at, you know, and then I would go to, oh my God, I'm gonna date myself. But back in the day was something called Crown Books. Remember Crown Books? I don't know if you're familiar with it. So Crown Books had, you know, you go into the store and um, so they had all the cookbooks and stuff like toward the front, at least the on sale cookbooks. Okay. And so I would go there and I love to look at the step-by-step, -step, like how something should look, what you needed to do. So by that time, you know, you have somebody in your family that cooks or bakes, so they're always doing something. So my uncle Earl was like, you know, I started baking stuff for him. And I can remember doing a cake for my aunt Emma. And I did like a heart-shaped basket weave so I did my little basket weave, and this was part of culinary school. So I did my little basket weave. And then, you know, it showed you how to lift like half the top and then had like candy or flowers spilling out of it. So no, I was, I 
You were innovative. It in was the fun. Day. It was. Like, I was intimidated by it. Yes. Yes, you were I had to be. In the day. Yeah, that's awesome. So now tell me with everything that you've done, all the clients that you've had, all of the fun that you, because you and I have worked together in, in different facets for probably what, 10 years now, I would assume. Um, has it been 10? Yeah, I think so. I think we're dating. Yeah, I think so. Um, so what That's has cool. been the craziest moment you've had with a client and your desserts, whether it be a cake or cupcakes or what have you? Mm. The craziest moment. That's I just want to question. hear about a cake that fell off the table, a cake that didn't deliver on time. You forgot to make some oh, cake. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no. And you know what? It's it's one of those, you know how just, just being in the business, no matter how many years you've been baking, or at least for me, no matter how long I've been doing this, you still cast necessary steps for granted. And this has never, ever, ever happened to me before. So um, I had to deliver a cake. This is a few years ago, believe it or not. Excuse me. I had to deliver a cake. And this lady wanted, her daughter was graduating from Howard. And I think, I want to say I met her at another event, but I wasn't quite sure because sometimes you never know how you meet people, even though I asked them, but sometimes I don't remember. And so, you know, she sent me a picture of one cake. You know, I always ask my clients for pictures of inspiration and then we'll recreate it to, um, for something specifically for you or something especially made for you as opposed to- Oh, that's why you asked me what my inspiration was. You should have you... known. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so that way, because you know, I'm not in your head and I don't necessarily know what exactly right. you like, or what your style is. So I always ask for cake pictures that you like or what you, you know, what you, and then I'll ask you what you like about them and so on and so forth. So I asked her that. So of course her budget, um, her, her, her taste a lot bigger than her budget. So I said, okay, well for your budget, we can do this. And so, and I, you know, I would say that you know, my prices are very fair, very comparable to what other people are charging. As a matter of fact, some people may say that um, I don't charge enough, but I think I'm comparable. So anyway, I gave her a tiered cake. As a matter of fact, it was three tiers, three tiers or whatever. I was, um, it was one of those days where I was pushing time and the elements were against me. It was a rainy day. It was, you know, it was muggy here in DC. It was rainy. It was just horrible. Um, so I'm on my way to the event. And at the time, you know, I had my cakes on a flat surface of, you know, just, re just reliving this moment is just like cringing <laughs> to me. I'm like cringing Sorry. inside. <laughs> Sorry. And so I'm delivering the cake. I'm about three blocks from the, from the venue. And I look over at the cake because the cake is in the box. I look over the cake and the cake is like this. Oh. <laughs> the cake is I the cake is literally like this. <laughs> the the top tier or all of the tiers. It was like the second tier. It was three tiers. So the cake was like this. <laughs> so now, mind you, I'm always one of those paranoid people that I know I I know I dial the cake enough. I know the cake is cold, but it just was. It was just one of those days. I just did like this. I pulled right. over because I knew. Right. I pulled over. And so I knew this was, this lady was, I was like, I just prayed to God. And so I had to call the lady and I said, listen, I had an accident. I, I said, your cake is destroyed. I said, is there any way I can run to, you know, Whole Foods? I can run to wherever you need to go to get your cake for your event. I think it was her friend or somebody like that. No, this and another, you know, I want my money back or whatever. Okay. I immediately refunded her her money back. And it was just one of those days where you just want to crawl into bed and just forget whatever happened. Um, so let's say a few, maybe like a month or so later, for some reason, I looked on Yelp. And this lady said to me that, well, she talked about me really bad. And as a matter of fact, I was like, I was reading this. I was like, oh my God, who's this person? Uh huh. She said that I was a liar. She said there was no accident. I didn't say I had an accident. I said, I didn't the say I was in an accident. I didn't say I was in an accident. I said, I had an accident. So she, I guess she assumed that I was in a car accident. I said, oh my God, right. I had an accident. So I never said I was in a car accident. She said that um, 
she said, she showed the picture that's what she wanted versus what she got. And I said to her that her cake, she wanted ruffles and she wanted this, she wanted that. And I said, this, I said, that cake, I said, to do ruffles, fondant ruffles, it takes a lot of time. It's a lot of work. It's going to cost this amount of money. That wasn't in her budget. She didn't want that. I said, okay, well, you're doing Swiss dots. You're going to have yellow. Some of your colors were yellow. So I said, okay, why don't we do this? And I explained to her specifically what I was going to do and what the flavors were. I followed her directions to the tea and I told her what she could get for her money. And you couldn't salvage any of the cake once it had leaned over? You couldn't? Well, the- I, I guess I could have, but I just knew this was a big event. Okay. And I would rather just scrap it than, you know, because I ended up, I had to do a delivery after that. And um, and I ended up just giving it to the kitchen staff. At my, well, I would at have my taken that bottom and got the spatula no. out and made it look a little pretty. Oh Mm-mm. my goodness! It wasn't it wasn't salvageable, and so, I wasn't going to embarrass myself like that. But anyway, needless to say, she blasted me on Yelp. She said that I was a liar. Said don't do business with me. Said I was very unprofessional. Said that I was this and said that I was that. And it was just it was one of those moments where you just like okay. And, and how just, early in the career was this? So the, as a matter of fact, no, I, that was the worst. Early in my career, that was, I don't think I had any, anything that, that was as devastating as that. You know what I mean? It's been times where I've had like this one lady, she was, I was doing a baby shower cake and a bit of a diva. And she asked me, oh, I want this on the cake. I want that. And I was like, of course, I get people what, the money will allow and the right. biggest bang for your buck. That's my thing. Oh, I want baby booties on this another side. So deliver the cake. Well, where are the booties? And I was like, well, okay, I told you it was going to be this. Oh, well, I want the booties. Okay, so I had to go back to the kitchen, throw some booties together, take it back to her house, put the booties on the cake, and then she loved it after that. Great. So, Damn but it. that was the most, yeah, that was the most devastating thing, just the fact to, to be humiliated publicly and just for her to lie and say that I was unprofessional, I was this or that. So that in terms of my career, I mean, besides embarrassing myself on TV. <laughs> I was going to say, see, that all preps you for exactly what you said. It got you ready for now what yeah, you have yeah. done. So how many shows have you been on Food Network? Actually, I just wrapped and filmed and aired um, my fourth show. Oh, congratulations. It was called Chop. Thank you. It was, um, I did Chop Sweet, so I faced yeah. my fear. I faced my fears. What was that? Just going on Chop, because you know, I watched the show for many, many years. Yeah. So I was wondering, I was wondering, okay, when are they going to do, when are they going to do a sweets version of this? Because, right. you know, you're like, you know, get on, you know, get on the plate, get on the plate, get on. You know, I watched the show forever, and I was like, oh my God, do I think I, am I fast enough to do this? Can I do this? What would I do? So then they finally... Um, they do uh, a pastry version of it. Yay. And I was like, okay. And yeah. so everything that you've said in terms of scrambling and getting ready throughout your course of time, you know, it got you ready for chop because you have a certain yeah. amount of time, you have a certain amount of ingredients, you do yeah. have an a, amazing kitchen. I will say that. We, we do know right. that. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that warehouse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the, yeah. It's one of those, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, anything you can possibly want in the kitchen, you have it there. Yeah, Any place of equipment you want, you have it there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, a, it was an amazing kitchen. Absolutely. Yep. And so the dessert that you made, um, how did you do with that particular dessert? I know you were um, a little bit nervous about doing some of the out of the box things, but how did you do with what you presented to Chops? Um, I think I did really, I think I did really well. Of course, you know, you're scrambling and it's like, okay, you know, you have to, when you open up the basket, you have to just immediately think, okay, what can I really do that's really delicious in this amount of time? So you have to like strategize the minute that you look in the basket and you don't know what's in the basket. Some of the things you may never have ever worked with before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so it was, it was, it was challenging, but I'm glad I faced my fears and I'm glad I did it. But I think I did really well. You know, I, think I think I did you pretty did good. Too. That yeah, yeah, we had yeah. a good time. Yeah, I know we had a good time. We had a cling good time. to that. Cling, cling to that. Yes. Do you make cannolis? I can. I haven't, but I can. Okay. I may have to get you to make. 
Yeah, because you just make the dough, but you need a little, you need the molds and then you fry them. Yes. Yeah. So I you think. just make the dough, the molds, put a triangle, wrap it around. Yeah. But I haven't done that yet. I think the last time I did it was culinary school. Because I think most of the people I've ever, most of the places I've ever worked, we've always bought it. Okay. Just because you need so many. Right. Now with COVID and everything, how are you working, um, you know, with your clients? Do you have to, um, you know, alter some of the things that you're doing? Has your business slowed down? Is it picked up? How are you doing right now with us being, you know, kind of stay home? Well, you know, I'm following and obeying CDC regulations. Um, so I'm being safe, you know, gloves, masks, um, try to do no contact, uh, things are wrapped. Um, individually wrapped. Um, you know, it took a lot of mo took, took a lot of maneuvering around certain things, but I thank God that I work in I have worked in places that have given me the experience to kind of, you know, change up things. But it's been a little it's been a little tricky just in terms of um, maneuvering around certain things. You know, making sure that you know my clients are comfortable, making sure that the food, of course, food safety. And making sure that um, you know I'm able to keep a roof over my head. Absolutely. <laughs> so, has have you noticed the events to decrease since the COVID, or are they still happening? People still ordering as they were. Absolutely. No. Um, in terms of my events, I'm really disappointed. Unfortunately, a lot of them have been canceled or postponed okay. to next year. Um, in terms of eating, people. That's one thing people have to do. People have to eat. And people and have to eat, eat dessert. Good. And they want to eat good and they want to eat dessert. Mm -hmm. So I've yeah. been blessed in that respect that um, that I have been at least uh, getting consistent work. That's and awesome. I thank God for that because, uh, you know, a lot of people are hurting, especially people in my industry, uh, the culinary industry, a lot of people are hurting. So many restaurants are closing down in the area and I'm just um, praying for some sort of relief yes. for uh, yes. my fellow industry folks. Peers, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Sugar Chef, you guys, he's in D.C. Um, amazing, amazing when we can actually get him. Usually the schedule is, what, two, three weeks out to try to plan for something. If it's a huge absolutely. event, you probably uh -huh. need to do two months in, in time. Um, I just pulled a little bit of my um, friendom, if you will, or <laughs> <laughs> to be able to say, can you Thanks. Can you please? Um, but Sugar Chef, if you all want to uh, speak with him in regards to an event, please feel free to reach out, Sugar Chef on Instagram and sugarchef.com. Now tell me, I know that you can't go into any competitions that you have specifically, but do you have any coming up? Um, I'm working on some things. I'm always working on some things. You know, you finished one competition and you have to think of the next thing that you're doing. So what would you like to do? So you're always saying, okay, I'm going to put this into the universe. Because you know what I say, when you put it into the universe, it will happen. I really love um, go ahead and say it. And it's not that I look what other people are doing, but you know, I think I love Carla Hall's career. And you know, I would love to be like the pastry version of Carla Hall, but in male form, of course, and to be myself, completely myself. But I love her career just in a sense. And of course I know behind the scenes, um, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of uh, things that of course I don't know about, but I just love, um, you know, I love a lot of things about her. I love a lot of things about her career. Her but, energy, her personality is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but she, I've, yeah, I've had the pleasure grown. of working with her. Yeah, I've had, the, I've had the pleasure of working with her in a lot of different events. And as you, as she is on TV, she is, is, look, she is exactly how she is in person. Absolutely. So I really love her career, you know, and I surround myself with a lot of uh, well-respected people in the industry. So um, I kind of absorb all of that and hopefully I kind of present that. Yes. Well, you need to make okay. sure that you speak that because you're in the mix, mix yeah. with everybody. I'm trying. Yeah, don't try. Just do it. Make it happen. You can do it. Um, now, Halloween. I like the show that comes on where they do the cake war for the Halloween special. Are mm -hmm. you, you um are you mixing around into that? Or you don't want to no. do that? Well, mm -hmm. Oh, I like thing. that. No, that's not my thing. I have a really, really super talented friend. I mean, this man can like carve fruit like nobody's business. Okay. Uh, Steve Beatty, and uh, he's, I think his team won last year. I think he's on it this season. I, I can't quite remember, but 
he's an amazing carver. So I'm sure for him to carve a pumpkin is like, you know, it's like nothing, but he's amazing. But no, that Halloween show, not quite. It's not your thing. Okay, mm -hmm. well, you have other holidays to come. So I'm certain that we'll see you on, on something coming up. I hope so. I hope so. And then you're going to work with Carla and let her know that you want to do it. But does Carla do pastries? Yeah, she does some, she does some dessert. Say, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I dessert. see more savory, I think, than sweet. I've been yeah. the thing that she's been doing. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. she did have the cookies. You're right. Right. That was her first mm -hmm. thing, the cookies. Yeah. I'll see yeah. you remember. I remember. Well, I remember yeah, those remember. days. Those yeah. days. Yes. Well, well fantastic. Cookies. Okay. The cookies, uh huh. That's who really got her into this and in, into where she is now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's amazing. I appreciate you taking time. I know you were busy and you had to carve out a few minutes to get on and say hello to everybody. And I and anything so for you and your listeners. <laughs> Thank you. And we're so excited to see the finished products of my cake. Yeah, for this oh oh you said the special client for the special the client special client <laughs> so yes that will um we will put that back up once you are finished and done and I will even be putting up pictures when we get to eat it tomorrow <laughs> thank you so much sugar chef yeah, I appreciate you cheers cheers clink, to clink, you clink, clink, clink. Clink. wait let me turn it around clink 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 that needs, I appreciate your new, um, that needs to be your new branding source. That clink, that's cute. I know. Yeah, I really appreciate you. Uh, appreciate your listeners for tuning in. Yes, yeah, we appreciate you stuff. too. And thank you so much for your creative abilities. I love it. I love you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to see what you have for me tomorrow. And uh, we will come back and let everybody know just how mm -hmm. amazing... It is because okay. this is a treat, guys. Amazing. Even though I know him, I amazing. have not been able to get him to do things just on the regular. So nope, not on a whim. Yeah. Mm -mm. This, yay! Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you allowing me to help celebrate your special time with you. Yeah. Yeah. This is the semi big one. Not That's quite. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's Wait, okay. All the way. You're this here. Is almost twenty one. Here. Yeah, you're here. That's the most important thing. Yes, yeah. thank you, thank you, Sugar Chef. We love you. Thank All right, you babe, so I love much. you too. And we'll talk soon. All right, Cha -cha. champagne and conversations, you guys. Thank you. Champagne and combo. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.